You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. I'm back. Rodrance for Black and White Network. Well, it's weird. I don't know what Kathy Griffin's deal is other than the fact that she's a left wing radical lunatic. I don't know what her deal is necessarily with Trump. And now with Joe Rogan, she even takes a shot at Elon Musk in here. Uh, it's pretty clear, in my opinion, anybody that does not agree with her, she wants to start, start taking shots as dangerous and a threat to America. Well, that's what's happened here. She is labeling Joe Rogan as a bigger threat to America than Donald Trump. Now, we're talking about somebody that had maybe the sickest case of TDS uh, throughout the entire Trump administration. We're talking about somebody that infamously took a picture of her holding what looked like Donald Trump's severed head in her hand. Okay, keep that in mind. That's the kind of lunatic, the kind of sickness we're dealing with here. But in my opinion, this is a free speech issue, really and truly. In my opinion, she knows that Donald Trump champions free speech. Joe Rogan champions free, free speech. Elon Musk champions free speech. What do they say? A lot of stuff that Kathy Griffith don't agree with. Now, in case you don't remember who she is, She's a washed-up old hag actress who also used to be a comedian back in the day. And I saw this and was like, I mean, I, uh, I said, well, that's a video. Let's just put it that way. Nutbag. Newsweek. Kathy Griffin worries that Joe Rogan is more dangerous to America than Trump. <laughs> I mean... Look, none of the three entities we're talking about is any kind of danger to America. But in this goofball's world, this sicko's world, Joe Rogan is now this, this huge threat to our society. Crazy. Comedian Kathy Griffin suggests, suggested that Joe Rogan is more of a threat to the U.S. than former President Donald Trump. Griffin, who faced backlash after posing with a severed head of an effigy of Trump in 2017, has been a frequent critic of the one-term former president over the years. This is the picture in question. Look at that sick bitch right there. I mean, I'm sorry. You've got to be pretty disturbed to hold up and take this picture that you know you had to go to some trouble to take and to concoct. You come up with, with this in your brain, some small, deranged way to st stay relevant when your career is essentially over. However, Griffin now says she sees the rise in the popularity of Rogan, who as Spotify's top podcaster has been accused of spreading misinformation on his show as more cause for concern than Trump's army of supporters. Speaking with New York contributing editor Kara Swisher on her podcast, Pivot, that just sounds like a radical left-wing progressive nutbag podcast, Griffin shared her thoughts on Rogan in the midst of criticizing billionaire Elon Musk. Uh, again, think about it. All three guys... I mean, we know Rogan is not the biggest fan of Trump, but all three guys, they covet what? What a lot of Americans covet. Freedom of speech. Quote, I haven't seen Joe Rogan in years, Griffin said. And I said to Judge Apatow, if I ran into Joe, I haven't seen him in probably 15 years, I would probably have a conversation with him. After explaining that she got to know Rogan when he appeared on a 90 sitcom news radio while she starred in the classic comedy Suddenly Susan, she added, it's the kind of Roganization of America that I now am more worried about than Trumpism. While Griffin didn't specify the source of her concern, okay, I'm just going to come out and make a blatant statement which is completely irresponsible and then I'm not going to offer an opinion 
as to why I feel this way. I'm not going to give you a reason. I'm just going to throw it out there. What are you jealous that his he's making a lot of a lot more money than you, even though you were both comedians back in the day, and Joe Rogan can still sell out shows all over the country right now? Well, Griffin didn't specify the source of her concerns about Rogan. She told Interview earlier this year that she makes a point of avoiding guys like Joe. That's the other thing, actual dudes. Okay, so many of these women are intimidated by actual dudes. Just straight up dudes. We know that, that Joe's massively big into working out. He's big into martial arts, MMA. And um, they find that kind of thing to be toxic and intimidating. His fan base is very frightening. <laughs> See, here we go. His fan base is very frightening because the misogyny runs so deep. You know why she's worried about that? Is because 80% of Americans can actually sit down and listen to Joe Rogan. I mean, I'm just saying, okay, his reach is like that. People on both sides of the aisle are sitting down consuming his podcast. You know, it depends on what topic as to whether or not I consume for the day, but you get the point. Quote, when I make fun of his show, the Elon Musk army comes after me. The Rogan army comes after me. They're very into swarming like you lunatic SJWs or not. That's what you're known for is canceling people online. The woke, the woke mob. That's, that's where it comes from. Kathy Griffin, you're one of those people leading that woke mob. I've known guys like Joe my whole career and guys like that are best to stay away from. There are other people that can get into in the arena with him. For his part, Rogan has also been critical of Griffin in the past, questioning on his show why she wasn't banned from social media after posting a controversial photo of her self-posing with a mannequin-severed head styled to resemble Trump. He pointed out that popular figures can make derogatory comments about a group of people that could lead members of the public to attack individuals who might fit that description. Quote, you're not responsible for that, are you? Probably not, Rogan said. But you've got to kind of feel like you played a part in the way people look at things, especially people that are very easily influenced, the dumb shits. Elsewhere, during her appearance on Pivot, Griffin discussed Musk's failed Twitter takeover. And as she said, quote, it makes me sad because I know this is so simplistic and silly, but... I'm one of those dumb Americans that walks around going, man, the stuff he could do with his money, the stuff he could do, by the way, even as an immigrant. But once you start rolling with Kanye West and Joe Rogan, it's like I don't know if you can even really talk to those guys anymore. I mean, who knows what the fuck you're thinking right now? Tying Musk in with her feelings about Rogan, she added that she's, quote, blown away that Musk doesn't consider himself a fascist. When she says blindly fast, fascistic things, when he does, she went on to call Musk, quote, gross for his comments about doing his part to boost the population after recently revealed he fathered a set of twins. The director of operations and special projects at NutriLink, a company he owns. Griffin then took Musk to task amid reports he spoke about his desire to colonize Mars. When I saw him at Code, which is an amazing festival of thinkers, I have to say I was really blown away by hearing him talk, Griffin said. I've heard him talk in person twice, and the stuff he says that I think is so probably false is just bizarre. Like he would say stuff like I thought was horrifying. Like it's a movie, Biodome, with Pauly Shore. He's basically Pauly Shore. Okay. So he's building a biosphere for Mars. Nobody wants to go to Mars. He has one problem that nobody asks about. What about the lack of oxygen? I'm just wondering how, how's, going to, how's that going to go with no oxygen in your crappy, smelly bubble, Griffin said. It's only rich people that can go there and only people who would want to be with people who I assume would give their money to Elon Musk at that point. I mean, I don't even think, I don't even, think even Elon's Musk's partner's Grimes is going to go. I mean, it and if she doesn't go, I'm not going to go. 
I mean, who knows? New we- Newsweek did reach out to Musk and Rogan, and all that just became a jumbled mess at the end, and that's the crap she actually said. I mean, you couldn't even understand. It just became non-coherent spoutings of horse shit coming out of a, a clearly lunatic um, nut- nutbag lady's mouth. Look, she's largely irrelevant. That's That's part of her problem. So what? I can talk about Trump. I can talk about Elon Musk. I can talk about Joe Rogan. They're all in the media sphere. I can say the most horrible things and not have to be held accountable. Well, that's free speech. Okay, fine. But I think she's got a problem that this is three individuals that has a large amount of crossover support. Okay, that's something that I think is key there. And it it concerns her. And clearly, when they start talking misogyny bullshit... They don't like actual real dudes. Do you ever notice that? That the radical left is threatened by actual real dude, real Uncle Jesse types? No. There I mean, that's what always kills me when the when the term civil war starts coming up and I'm like, do you really want to start a war with people that's been shooting deer rifles since they were seven? I I I mean I'm just wondering, is that smart? Because I don't know that that's the smartest thing in the world. Um it's crazy. It's crazy. And and you're talking about people that are like, ooh, gross, not a gun. Yeah, I mean, you just get the point here. It's it's crazy as hell. Um, wow. Wow. Now it's not Trump that she's grifting behind. It's Joe Rogan and, her, and his followers. Oh, what is it? 220 million a month that listen to his podcast? They're now the most dangerous... Dangerous entities to America, even more so than Trumpism. Crazier than a shithouse rat. That's what we say here in Texas. Bat shit crazy. Yeah, I may put bat shit crazy in the thumbnail. That's going to be a thing. Oh, tell me what you think, Black and White Network supporters. People like Kathy Griffin, largely irrelevant trying to stay around, trying to hang around, trying to grift around. But most importantly, oh my God, men. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Black and White Network supporters, make sure you check out the Black and White Network merchandise store. Link in the description. Use promo code USA First, all one word. USA First, all one word. 25% off now. Hey.